on the next 10-8, an in-depth conversation with Sheriff Ken Mascara as we kick off an all-new season. On this episode of 10-8, Sheriff Ken Mascara talks about new technologies and current crime trends. And we'll take to the streets with Deputy Chris Jaden as he patrols an area of the county looking for dealers and users. Welcome to 10-8, your inside look into the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. I'm your host, Sergeant Chris Sissio. Today we're talking with Sheriff Ken Mascara. He is the Sheriff of St. Lucie County. Sheriff, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sheriff, you've been sheriff for 11 years now, and you've probably seen a lot of changes take place over that 11 years. Can you tell us about some of the changes that you've seen take place? <laughs> How long is the show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, first of all, um, when I was elected, our jail population was only 600. Uh, currently today, we're about 1,300, mm -hmm. uh, and have uh, reached uh, levels as high as uh, 1,800 uh, back in 07, 08. Uh, the deputies on the road have been introduced to information technology upgrades that uh, have put them uh, a finger touch away from just about anything they need to uh, more effectively do their job. And the information technology that we've introduced throughout the office has uh, made our operation much more efficient and effective for all involved. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the challenges that you have seen? You know, obviously the challenges were probably different back in 2001 and that they are now, but as specifically as the sheriff, what challenges do you face that are different today than they were, you know, 11 years ago? Well, we uh, weathered uh, a terrible storm in 04. Uh, we saw a tremendous population growth in uh, 04 through 07, and now we're seeing the effects of uh, decreased property values, which has caused uh, a budget uh, a budget challenge for not only our county and the sheriff's office, but our state in general. So uh, we were here when times were great, and now we're here when times are uh, being challenged uh, fiscally, and uh, we're going to weather the storm. Uh, simple as that. We uh, have grown to do things uh, more efficient and effective, and uh, that's the way it's got to be. Yep. So. Understood. Now, there are a number of crimes that are unique in today's culture, one of them being prescription drug abuse. What kind of problems are we facing right now with uh, prescription drugs and, and the abuse of those? Well, I'm going to use the word epidemic, and the last epidemic that most people can, uh, can remember was the crack cocaine epidemic. And uh, prescription drug abuse has turned into another epidemic, which uh, started probably around uh, five or six years ago. And uh, here in Florida, there are seven deaths a day that we are experiencing due to prescription drug abuse. And what is uh, very challenging with this is it's legal drugs that people are taking illegally. So uh, most people legally obtain these drugs. Uh, there's no stigma to go out on a corner and buy them. They can go to their local pharmacy. And then uh, through either their misuse or abuse of those drugs, uh, they find themselves addicted. And uh, from that, the addiction is uh, uh, very, very strong, and uh, they result, resort to other criminal activity to pay for this addiction and pay for the drugs. And it's just a, an epidemic that we're seeing not only in our community, but communities across the United States in general. Now, I've read that uh, senior adults are specifically targeted because they have quite a few drugs in their homes. You know, what are some tips that the senior adults can use to uh, kind of safeguard those items in their homes? Well, it's not uncommon to hear that a uh, drug addict to prescription drugs will follow a senior home, uh, find uh, either be welcomed into the house or break into the house to find these drugs to use illegally. But seniors should uh, really keep their prescription drugs under lock and key where only they have access to it. Uh, there are stories every day that we hear that grandchildren visit the house and end up taking the parents' or grandparents' prescription medication. But uh, prescription medications should be kept under lock and key. And you know, in the sheriff's office, we uh, have some initiatives where if you are no longer using your medication or your medication is outdated, you can bring it right to Midway Road uh, Sheriff's Office and we properly dispose of that medicine. So rather than have it sit in your house and possibly uh, be taken by someone who is going to use it illegally, you can dispose of it properly through us. Right. So senior adults and the population in general have options uh, when it comes to protecting their their narcotics, their prescription drugs, and things like that. That is correct. Now, we were talking before the show about precious metal thefts. Um, they have become more prevalent um, in our area. When we come back after the break, we're going to talk more about the uh, precious metal thefts that are taking place in St. Lucie County.
With the economy, uh, the price of copper and lead and uh, some other precious metals have just skyrocketed, and that is very attractive to criminals. Welcome back to Tonight. We have been speaking with Sheriff Ken Mascara, and prior to the break, we started going into precious metal thefts that have been taking right. place in St. Lucie County. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, uh, with the economy, uh, the price of copper and lead and uh, some other precious metals have just skyrocketed, and that is very attractive to criminals. Um, the uh, probably hottest uh, precious metal out there uh, that we're seeing in our uh, in our incident reports is copper, copper thefts, and. Uh, Air conditions have copper, uh, there's copper tubing in homes uh, with plumbing, and uh, with this economy there are a lot of vacant homes due to foreclosures, and criminals know that, so they target these vacant homes, they enter them, they remove the copper uh, from the walls, uh, from the plumbing, and then they remove the air conditioned units and take it to a uh, recycling center where they're paid. But uh, in light of that, the home is now left uh, vandalized, and uh, then there's uh, other side effects of that. And it's a vicious cycle we're seeing with, uh, with these copper thefts. Now, what are some of the things that the public can do, obviously above and beyond just for a neighbor watching, neighbor calling 911, but what are some of the things that they can look out for to protect themselves from that? Well, most people in a neighborhood will know the homes that are under foreclosure or going through foreclosure. Uh, the vacant homes are very susceptible to this type of theft and uh, just keep an eye on it. If they see something suspicious, call 911. Good. Now, you had talked at the beginning of the segment about uh, technology and how technology has grown over the past uh, 11 years that you've Correct. been sheriff. Tell us some of the innovations that the sheriff's office has, has participated in to utilize technology in law enforcement. Well, you know, I remember Bill Gates, uh, when he uh, invented uh, or brought the computer to the forefront uh, of, uh, of America, and he said his wish was to have a computer in every home. Well, now we have a computer in every patrol car. We have a computer at every detective desk. Uh, and uh, that is needed for them to do their job. In the patrol car, uh, that computer, they can access uh, databases of uh, past criminal activity. They can access driver license uh, history, as well as uh, pull up uh, information on the person they're dealing with. And most importantly, when uh, dealing with a uh, call that are, they're being dispatched to, on their computer comes a history of the residents they're going to. Uh, so it's uh, for officer safety as well as the efficiency of the officer in dealing with situations. And uh, also on their computer, uh, something we've implemented is the critical incident response plan in which uh, there is a uh, photo downlay as well as a blueprint of every public uh, governmental building and school here in St. Lucie County. And when those deputies respond to those uh, scenes, they could pull this information up and have it at their fingertips. And so as we've seen as, as just general members of the public, technology being expedient and at our fingertips now, it's also that way for the deputies as well. That is correct. In furtherance of officer safety. By all means. That's very good. Um, you had also mentioned while we were talking on the break about the annual report that we have for the sheriff's office. Um, can you highlight some of the things that you've got in the annual report that, uh, that, that you want to make known? And uh, going with the theme that everyone has a computer in their home, uh, our annual report, uh, which uh, this year is the, uh, the 2010 one, which is out, they can access on, uh, on their computer online with stlucysheriff.com. But uh, the annual report highlights all of the great things the men and women of the sheriff's office do throughout the year, as well as highlights of some other uh, initiatives that we've undertaken. But it's great reading, and again, like I said, they can access on their home computer uh, through our website, stlucysheriff.com. Oh, very good. Now, uh, finally, before we close out the show, um, this obviously is a brand new 10-8 show that we have started off, and this is the actual first show that we're, we're making today. Correct. And, um, you know, what we wanted to do is just find out the goals that you have and what you would like uh, the direction of the show to be over the next few months as we start moving forward. Well, I can tell you, uh, more people talk to me about the 10-8 show and the action uh, mm -hmm. clips that we do than anything else. But really, my goal of this show is to open up uh, the sheriff's office to our citizens to let them know uh, what the men and women of the sheriff's office do every day to uh, let our taxpayers and citizens be cognizant of the challenges uh, that the men and women face each day and how they're responding to those challenges. So uh, we just want to have an open book so our citizens can see the great things the men and women are doing. Now, it's also another initiative on top of the Citizens Academy that we have that kind of makes the sheriff's office transparent where the public can come in 
um, they can actually see the internal workings of the sheriff's office it makes it more uh, personal to them. By all means. One of the things I hate hearing uh, and seeing is when a governmental official gets up and say, uh, this is mine and this is the way we're going to do things. Um, people are elected. Uh, they're elected to manage an office that is really owned by the people. And uh, hence, we want to open up the people's sheriff's office so they can see what is there, how it's operated, and we're here just to manage that for them. But right. we're an open book and we want them to see that. Well, one of the many questions that I get when I'm out and about in the public is, you know, how does this work? And it's a mm -hmm. very simple process that if they just came in, maybe rode with a deputy, That's correct. came into the Citizens Academy or even watched the Tonight Show, they'd be able to see just how efficiently the sheriff's office is actually run. By all means. Well, good. Well, the public is always invited. And for more information, you can log on to stlucysheriff.com for an inside look into our website and to the workings of the sheriff's office. If you have any questions, you can contact us at 871-5303. That's the Crime Prevention Unit. And when we come back, we will be taking to the streets with one of the hardworking deputies of the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Chris Jaden. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Stephanie, did you, did you swallow any more of that crack? No, I didn't swallow Okay, just stand there. Stand there, okay? You be polite with me and I promise I'll... Well, sir, put your hands where I can see them. I was a member of the Special Investigations Unit for three years. The, uh, the training that you receive in that unit is uh, top of the line. You, you go to school after school and it's mostly narcotics related offenses. Um, that's a specialized unit that deals primarily in that, but on road patrol, it's still something that we definitely look for. I uh, do honestly believe that drugs are the root of all evil, and they lead to a slew of other crimes being committed, such as burglaries, robberies, um, just about any kind of person's crime you can think of. So it's, it's definitely something that we target out here on road patrol. We're going to be stopping this car. Uh, for a minor traffic infraction. We did witness the car leaving a well-documented narcotics location. We're gonna conduct the stop. It's occupied two times and uh, investigate the traffic infraction and then... Hold on the vehicle. It's continuing to roll. All right, I gotta get out on it. Need to put the car in park. Hey, how you doing, sir? See your driver's license registration, buddy? Now just keep your car parked. Yeah, keep it parked. You leave your door shut, buddy. How you folks doing tonight, alright? Alright. Where you folks coming from? Going to where, sir? Danny's okay. And where you coming from now? He's got a knife right there in that glove box, Matt. All right, why don't you go ahead and step out here and okay. talk to me real quick. Stand right there for me. Sir, if, it, if it's okay, I'd like to take that knife out of the glove box and just put it up here for a second. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll grab it. I'll grab it, please. Yeah, okay. Get up to your license, sir. Yeah. I had got it. Just an expired driver's license? Okay. Okay, ma'am. What did you say your name was? Stephanie. Okay. Stephanie, open your mouth. Lift your tongue up. Stephanie. Don't, right swallow right right don't swallow the right rock. Don't swallow the rock. Don't spin. swallow it. Back away. Okay. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. Put your hands up on the wheel. Put your hands behind your back, Stephanie. Okay. Stephanie, did you, did you swallow any more of that crack? No, I didn't swallow anything. Okay, just stand there. Okay. Stand there, okay? Yeah. You be polite with me and I promise I... Sir, put your hands where I can see them. Do not move your hands again until you're told to do so. Do you understand? Just relax, okay? And you didn't swallow any more no, crack? No, I didn't swallow anything. Okay. Can we pull him out and cuff him? Step out for me for a minute, buddy. All right, right now you're not in the rest. Right now you're going to be detained, okay? Mm -hmm. Give me a favor. Put your hands behind your back for me. Put your hands behind your back for me, sir. Mr. anything on you? You ain't got no drugs. Open your mouth. All the way. All the way. All the way. You got to be kidding me. All the way. That's so give me another unit way. over here. All the way. Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit the dope it's out. Gonna kill you. It's gonna kill you. Spit, Spit the dope out. out. Spit the dope out. Spit the dope out. Spit it out. Stephanie, come over here where I can see you. Spit the dope He's out. Fighting. He's fighting me. I'm gonna spray He's you. Me. I'm gonna spray you. Spit it out. Spit it all out. 
Spit it out. You've already got some out. You've already got it. Go ahead. Spit it out. Keep spitting it. Open. Open. Is that it? All right. Let go. He's, he's talking. He can talk. He can talk. He's good. That's all right. All right, that's the world coast, everybody down. Yeah, okay. Okay, you, you hang tight. I'm gonna help you up. Step up. Stand right there on that uh, push bumper. Do not move from there, okay? 300 SO. We are 10-4, we have two detained. Um, we could use at least one more deputy here, though. Fort Pierce just showed up 97. Six bags of marijuana in his mouth. That's, uh, that's a mouthful. There's more right here in the front seat of the vehicle. Yes, sir, there's still weed in the seat. You didn't, you didn't get all of it. Come, come stand here, come here. Come to me, don't go near the car. You left a bag. That's okay. All right, this is from the ground and I'm gonna collect this. No, not yet. This is the weed from the ground. This will be the weed from passengers or driver's seat. I'm gonna test that cocaine. Yeah, she's not gonna, she's She's been doing this a while. She's not going to get perped. I hope not anyway. That's blue. Yep, felony blue. Whose weed is that? That's her weed. That's her weed. Yeah. And she gave it to you. And when she gave it to you, did you know what it was? Yeah. Why did you try to put it in your mouth? Were you trying to swallow it or were you just trying to hide it? Just trying to hide it for her? All right, next time do not, <laughs> I, I'm glad you finally gave in and stopped resisting, but don't. I, I, I want to resist, you, know, you didn't want to spit that weed out of your mouth either though. I know you didn't, but that's okay, all right? All right, so she's gonna be going to jail for possession of cocaine, he's gonna be going to jail for possession of marijuana. That guy had a mouthful of weed, I couldn't believe it. He had, no, he had six, six, six bags in his mouth. <laughs>